Personally, I think the best beginner 3D printer on the market is the Bamboo Lab A1. I was stuck with these older style where you had to manually level your 3D printers. And honestly, I just, I didn't know what to do. So what I did was I went online, I started researching, I saw Bamboo Lab had the Bamboo Lab A1. I saw a variety of YouTubers reviewing this 3D printer. You know, I, I was really kind of lost as far as what I should buy next. It had been a couple of years since I've been into 3D printing. I had resin printed, you know, did FDM printing. And you know what? I just wanted something that works. And that's what the Bamboo Lab A1 does. It just works. So let's go ahead and go into the variety of reasons why I think you should pick up the Bamboo Lab A1 if you're a beginner and you're looking for a 3D printer. Now look, as I sit here with the Bamboo Lab A1, I, I understand it's not the most flashy printer. It's not, you know, the Core XY. It's not the fastest 3D printer on the market, but you know what it does? It just works. And for those first getting into the 3D printing hobby, that's what I think is most important. You know, a lot of people will say, hey, get yourself a 3D printer that you can tinker with, that you can learn your way around it. But that's all time that you're wasting when you could be creating these crazy projects, right? You know, I think that's, that's the one thing that turns a lot of people away from 3D printing is that there is a pretty big knowledge barrier to enter. And with the Bamboo Lab A1, we kind of get rid of that. And this is just kind of Bamboo Lab products in general. But as far as the Bamboo Lab A1, you're looking at a starting price of $399 regular, right? Bamboo Lab normally has sales throughout the year. I know if you're watching this in June or at the end of June, currently they're gonna run their anniversary sale. This is gonna be $340. You can get multicolor printing as well. So you can get a combo price. I think it's like $480. Normally it's $550. So we'll talk about that, uh, the AMS also in a bit as well and what my thoughts are on it. I mean, you're, you're still getting a lot when it comes to Bamboo Lab. I mean, the A1 outside of the H2D is one of their newest products. So it has a lot of the updated stuff on it. You're gonna get the quick change nozzle system, right? Which makes it ex extremely easy to swap out the nozzles. You're not gonna sit there and have to unplug wires. It's literally just a magnet that plugs in and out of the A1. And that's why the H2D has adopted this system because it's so easy. Now, I will say it, when it comes to like printing ABS, ASA, you know, a lot of people who are first looking for a 3D printer, you might've said, hey, I, that might be something I wanna play with in the future. I, I, personally, I have never printed with ABS, ASA. I really don't see a point in it because for me, the, the toxicity or the smells and you know the dangers of printing with those materials aren't worth the trade-off for me. So that's why I choose to stick with PLA. Um, as far as that, it does everything I need. I've created magnificent projects with PLA, PETG. You know, there, there's nothing more you really need. And I would say 90% of people probably, maybe, maybe a little less, maybe it's like 80% of people are only going to be printing in PLA or PETG. So there's not really a need for that fully enclosed system that like something like the P1S offers. Now, the P1S is also a step up as far as price, right? You're looking at a couple hundred dollars more. I think for the sale, it's going down to like 500. And then currently it's sitting at 699. If you're gonna sit here and try to sell me on me buying a 3D printer, it's your very first 3D printer. Would you rather spend $700 or would you spend $380 or 399, I believe is what the Bamboo Lab A1 is currently sitting at. If you're looking at a 3D printer, say maybe the P1S and the A1, you can't really decide. Well, I mean, technically the Bamboo Lab A1, I guess not technically, it is. It is newer than the P1S. You know, it still has a touch screen here. It doesn't have that dial system. You know, that's something that I think the P1S really lacks on. Yes, does it work? Of course, is it gonna go bad on you? Probably not, right? It's an older style system. It's been around for an extremely long time. So you can probably trust that that's gonna work out for you. But as far as the A1, I've had no issues with the touch screen here. Does it lag sometimes when it says like, okay, you have a tangle on your, your filament spool here and it wants you to extrude? Yes, it's, it's pretty laggy sometimes, but it's, it's not to the point where it's unusable. It's still extremely usable. You, you just have to wait maybe an extra second. Nothing that's a big deal to me. Um, I know it's going to work, it's going to load, but it is a little annoying sometimes when I'm just trying to get in and out, but it, it works. As far as the stock build plate, a lot of people are going to try to sell you 
on, you know, maybe you need a BQ glacier, glacier plate or you need all these extra upgrades. Honestly, I've never had an issue with this plate sticking. Um, you know, I've used it for around 12, 1300 hours at least. Um, you know, it might be even 13, 1400 now since I've last checked. But as far as this Bamboo Lab build plate, it, it's giving me no fits. So I don't really see a need to upgrade it. As far as the A1, it, there's not many upgrades you can really make to it to improve performance or anything. They're really just going to be things that help your ease of use, you know, such as like this poop shoot. Of course, you don't want filament flying off. Why, why did we think that was a good idea when we started multicolored printing? I'm not sure. You know, of course, no printer today comes with something that catches the poop when you're printing with multicolor, which is kind of silly, but you know, to each their own as far as everything else. And you know, I guess they said as a 3D maker, you're gonna come up with your own solution, but here we are. But again, everything with this printer just works. The prints are beautiful. You know, you can make massive projects with the build plate being the 256 by 256. I've created large projects with this thing. Now, my B1 battle droid that I created is essentially half of it, if not more than half, is just printed on the Bamboo Lab A1. The 256 by 256 by 256 build plate has been widely adopted. Even the new Centauri Carbon has that. You know, if you're looking at the Any Cubic, it's S1, I believe it's what, a 250 by 250. It's, there's so many different, you know, 3D print companies that are actually copying this build play side. Now moving on, right? I mean, at the end of the day, my recommendation is purely based off my experience. And with my experience, this thing it requires no maintenance. Um, I, I haven't had a bad nozzle. You know, if you go on their website and you're past a lot of these warranties on things such as consumables, which would include nozzles, belts, things like that. Bamboo Lab does a really good job of keeping these materials in stock. Now, of course, your experience may vary. If you're new to the 3D printing hobby, maybe you will have a nozzle go bad and you'll create like a blob of death and it's a lot easier just to replace it than to fix it. You know, you can then go to their website and easily just get that within a week. Amazon also has third parties. There's a lot of third parties that you can also order these parts because these parts are because these printers, excuse me, are so popular. It's, it's just a widely adopted formula or they're widely adopted. So third parties are creating things for them. You know, they're just going to, so many people have them, I guess is what I'm trying to say. You can just get help with them. So if you're trying to decide between the Bamboo Lab A1 and the P1S, there's a few things you do need to consider, right? The A1 is a bed slinger. So of course it's not going to be as fast, but as far as print quality, I, I truly believe that you're going to be able to achieve the same thing. Will you have to make some compromises with things such as speed? Yes. Um, you know, really that's all there is to it. Bamboo products do a great job of just having ex outstanding print quality straight out of the box. You know, once you set this up out of the box, it's gonna run through all of the Bamboo Lab calibrations and it's, it just works, right? Like I, I'm, I'm sounding like a bamboo shill and in no way have they paid me to make this video. They don't need to. Their products sell themselves. I'm just someone who I, I don't like if someone's not, or if someone's gonna spend their money on something and it just, it's kind of a crap shoot out of the box. You're not really sure what you're going to get. It, to me, that really, that really bugs me and grinds my gears with some of these 3D print companies is like, we're coming out with iteration after iteration after iteration of a printer. And instead of improving the printer we are currently selling, we're just coming out with a whole new generation. I mean, this printer has been out for like two years at this point and it, it's great. Like, I don't know what else to say, guys. I think there is no better beginner 3D printer on the market. I guess what got away from me is you're looking at $700 for the P1S, right? And this printer is sitting at $400. If you're looking at the sale, you're going down to 340, you know, or 500. Then I think the P1S makes more sense. But if we're outside of this sale period and you're watching this period after those two weeks of Bamboo Lab sale, the A1 for $400, I would take it over any printer at $400 or less. To me, this thing is a beast. It, help, it holds up. I talk about replacement parts being available, but I haven't needed any personally, right? I, if you go to FDM Miniatures, 
that subreddit is full of people making miniature or resin styled miniatures and bamboo lab printers, even as the A1 mini. So if you're looking for maybe a FDM printer that can print quality miniatures, check out the FDM miniatures subreddit. Maybe the A1 mini is for you. It's just gonna be the same printer, just smaller, and you can put a 0.2 nozzle on it. It's going to be fantastic. And so the whole gist of this video is, is the A1 still the best beginner 3D printer on the market in 2025? And I think that's an astounding yes. Not only does it come in at $400 or less, it has replacement parts, you know, Bamboo has created this ecosystem where if you do need to replace a part, you just scan a QR code or you just Google it and they have this whole, their own Wikipedia where it gives you videos on how to replace these parts. And you know, the community for Bamboo Lab printers is so large that someone has gone through their issue. Someone is going to be able to help you, whether it's on Reddit, whether it's in their Facebook groups, whether it's, you know, wherever it may be. Now, I'm gonna say, you, you probably won't need those Facebook groups. And so I've never needed to troubleshoot something on this printer. And so I think that says a lot. And again, this is my experience with the 3D printer. Everyone else is gonna have varying experiences. It's like a vehicle. I could drive mine for 200,000 miles. You could drive yours for 100,000 miles and it's dead. So this is just my experience and I'm really just freeballing this whole thing <laughs> as far as this video to say, I think you should buy the A1. If you're, if this is gonna be your first 3D printer, I think you'll be more than happy with it. The only thing between this and the, the, the P1S you're compromising on is speed. Now let's talk a little bit though about the multicolored system because I actually don't even have mine hooked up. Personally, I see multicolored more as kind of gimmicky. And the reason I find it gimmicky is I'm printing stuff and I'm completely, I'm sanding stuff down. I'm painting it myself. I'm doing all that. Now, I, I do w want to admit here that I have recently found more opportunities to mo do more multicolored printing that I want to try out. Um, and so I'm probably going to hook this back up again to try them and compare them to another multicolored printer. And so I, I do see a use in this. For me, the main benefit in the AMS system, at least comes when I run out of PLA, if there is a PLA I have tuned to be the same exact one that ran out, it'll automatically feed it. So it's like an automatic feeding system. So with all of this being said, I'm a firm, a very firm believer in the Bamboo Lab A1. I think it's the best beginner 3D printer because of the price. Now the P1S is probably a better 3D printer, but not by that much, right? To me, if you're only printing PLA, you can handle, you know, I mean, it is kind of a big speed difference. You know, let's just say I'm gonna over tune this and say 20%, you know, what what is that, that equal to? But if you're sanding, priming, doing all this stuff to parts, like you could be sanding and priming parts while you're still waiting for parts, you can make up that difference. Um, you know, but if you're someone who's just like to pump out something and do it all in one day, possibly, um, that could be a big deal to you. But I, I still think you're, you're gonna buy a 3D printer, you're gonna say, I wish I had another one, and you can essentially almost buy two of these for the price of one P1S. Now that is, of course, my pitch for the Bamboo Lab A1, but I might find myself buying a P1S because I think it's only fair so that way you can make true comparisons to the Bamboo Lab A1. But I'm extremely happy with this thing. I bought it last September. I've done heavy usage. Like I said, I've made a life-size battle droid with this in the Centauri Carbon, and I would recommend this printer to anybody. I'm comfortable recommending the Bamboo Lab A1 to anybody. So if you guys liked, or you guys liked hearing my thoughts, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, guys. Let me know what kind of videos you wanna see in the future, and we'll see you next time.